OM Business Network. So much for one broadcast. Hello everyone, it's another very beautiful day to you and thank you very much for taking time to join us on yet another package of the EOM Business Network. Oh yes, the voice of corporate Nigeria. I am Olorogo Elkana Maware. Today on the program as always, our focus is a look at the Nigerian economy as we will be interfacing with select industry operators about their businesses, the operating environment and other related issues. Also on the lineup is a special report on drilling contractors in Nigeria with a focus on the International Association of Drilling Contractors, Nigeria. It's a package you must see. Sit back as we bring you the details. Oga for Property Investment Limited, one of the fastest growing real estate investment and marketing firms in Nigeria with a mission to offer quality and affordable housing to its publics. Oga for Property Investment Limited specializes in sales and marketing of landed properties, residential and commercial, real estate development, project management, building and construction, architectural and structural designs, and our properties come with easy payment plans. Think property. Consult Oga for Property Investment Limited. Oga for Property Investment Limited. Increase in value. to tap and harness the expected growth. We see every customer as a partner. The idea of local content is developing Nigerian capacity. Combating housing deficit through the provision of affordable homes has always been a key role of the real estate sector all over the world, including Nigeria. In line with this development, Chief Executive Officer of Veritasi Homes and Properties, Nola Adetola, spoke on tackling the housing gap in Nigeria. The Nigerian space is not giving low-income owners, civil servants, normal people in the street, ability to own properties. The minimum wage was 19 for 19,000 plus, and now it's 30,000 approved. You know, normally that it take, it's going to take a normal um, civil servant, an average worker, to save a long time or something. They're getting 60 before they can own properties. Right now, we've created property with long developments to target the common class. We've sold properties in Shimawa that's gone for 700,000 era only, and they were able to do payment plan for like 24 months, and then it was easy for people to buy. You know, we sold almost 200 plots in that. We sold in Ibejuleki. Right now, we are still selling in Ibejuleki. We've sold properties of 700, we've sold of 2.5, sort of 6 million, 6 million properties ready to build. You know, so a lot of people have built houses, own properties through us because it's all about the people anyway. Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of King Snazi Global Limited, Kama Adeyemi, spoke on the progress of real estate operators. We've not been able to deliver up to 15% of deficit of housing in Abuja. Unfortunately, the economy has not really been very friendly, so a lot of things are not being done, but we still have a lot to do in terms of providing housing for the masses. The government are trying their own part. Even the developers too have also come in and put their own inputs. But well, most times we find that you have the land but you don't have the infrastructure to support it. Whereas the government are supposed to bring in their own, put in their own parts by providing infrastructure. We are trying to move to Lagos as well and do one or two things. But right now in Abuja we have uh, some new places in Kusape. Though they are in partnership with other landowners as well, but we will do the buildings because that's what we are synonymous with: building affordable and a non-compromised structure. I'm putting that. I'm using compromise in the sense that uh, a standard, following all the regulations of engineering, following the normal steps to build properties. Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Fengate Insurance Brokers Limited, 
Leko Biobaku has identified the significance of insurance services. Well, there are certain things that, um, certain reasons why you do need to insure. Um, the first is that when you insure and there's uh, a loss, you don't start from ground zero. If you buy uh, a car and you don't insure it and the car the other involved in an accident or is stolen, you have to replace it from, from your pocket. Whereas when you have insurance and you have a misfortune of losing uh, either your car or then the insurance company will give you uh, enough to either to replace it or will give you enough so that you don't have to have too much to replace it. The public doesn't see the wisdom of bad insurance. And that is the EOM Business Network News. EOM Business Network on Silverbird Television presents a special television report on the real estate industry in Nigeria with Royax Homes. This package is specifically designed to take a critical look into developments in the industry. Watch out. Emmanuel Atureta and Joel Oji are managing partners of Brookstone Property. Uh, Brookstone is a mixed-use development company. We specialize in the development of a few asset classes, predominantly uh, residential and commercial and retail. We have a few divisions, subdivisions within those asset types. For instance, in residential, we have our Lifestyle by Brookstone, which is our luxury residential mark, uh, division. And we have our Homes by Brookstone division, which is our middle and upper middle income uh, residential division. In Brookstone Commercial, we deal primarily with office and industrial. And we also have Brookstone Retail, where we deal with small format retail. So retail units less than 2,000 square meters. Simply put, I think the vision of Brookstone um, is to be the most innovative property company in Nigeria. Not the largest, but to be the most innovative. What I mean by that is that when we set out, when AT and I set out to start this company, um, we said that we wanted to be different from many other companies. So the, the way we carved that niche is by um, is by figuring out what was in the what was in the market, what was missing in the market and creating a property platform that's based on differentiation and it's based on innovation. It's, thus far it's worked out well. Um, we have our vision 2025 to be a $50 million company over the next seven years. We're a year into that, into that uh, seven year timeline and that's where we're, some of our advisors have valued this at approximately $10 million. So we're working our way there and they know how to reach our goals. Our attention to detail, that's the first thing, you understand? And I doubt there's any company that goes as anal as we do. Um, our staff are actually getting used to that level of expectations from us. You understand? We are openly detailed. You see it in everything we do. From You can take any of our brochures, any of our buildings, anything we do, we are very detailed. Our clients see that and they're happy with it. Um, I won't go past past. Yes, and I'll kick off from when we set off as a company together. So one of our development managers for Landmark, yes, um, Paul gave us the chance to do developments with them, so we've done very well with Landmark. Um, after that, we've done some apartments in Alegushi, we call them Alegushi Homes, and uh, a little higher than middle income homes. Uh, it was a very good transaction we had there. The person we worked with, yes, and he's still a client till now because the returns were very good. Um, we've also done a distribution center down the Lake Effect Expressway, 7,000 cubic meter uh, warehouse with an office data center, um, cold room, and the whole works. So the beauty with our company is that we try and do different kinds of projects. We don't want to be a company known for building residential homes. Instead, we, are, we have commercial, we have a commercial line, we have a retail line. Um, just the whole works. And so we provide space for individuals. If you need space, think about Brookstone. Engineer Francis Uludemi is the president of Solar Affairs. 
solar affairs is an ideology that was better out of this passion to help solve this power poverty in Africa. All of a sudden, we found out that um, the black race suffers not just leadership, but we suffer basic amenities. Number one, which is power. And if you check most African countries, majorly power is our problem. And if you check also, it is the same set of land that has the best of the sunlight. So when this came, we began to look at how do we come in to solve some problems alongside doing business. Number one thing that better solar affairs is we needed awareness. People needed to be aware that what they are looking for in Sokoto is already in their pocket here. You don't need to run everywhere to get power. God will not do anything except the first time, let there be light. Okay, let me summarize those long sentences. In a nutshell, we say taking solar to the grassroots. Now, our strategies are simple, just like I mentioned. We first went out for awareness. I remember spending over 4.8 million doing awareness on MITV. After that, we launched out into partnering with the NYC, where we felt the best set of people that can help run this vision are the youth. And the body that has the larger amount of youth is the NYC. So we decided to launch a program alongside with them. So we're partnering with their skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development department. It's a department in NYC. This department at every orientation would always have these core members put together to go for the skills. <music> we run projects. We still continue with our awareness programs. We still run at institutes now upgraded from just an academy to an institute. Our registration is still in process. The process is soon be out very soon. That now we are partnering with finance houses to make sure that this vision is delivered. It's not just a vision on the periphery. We're not partnering with these finance houses in such manner that when A is, is interested in the service and he doesn't have the money at the, mo at the moment, finance, uh, finance house A or B can be the support. Finance this individual, we do financing for cars. But we don't do financing for what is more important than car. So these are major. Then also, we do collaborations with uh, cooperative societies, organizations, we approach them for their members to also do that. OK, we'll not just go there, we'll enlighten them, find out who and who is interested, they'll try and power them. Of course, if I have been living without the generator for 15 years and without the NEPA, and I'm still living in Nigeria, it is very, very possible. I have a couple of clients too that are, they may not be 100% off these stuffs, but they are close to 80, 70% off. Those things only come up when some specific loads are to be put on. Bokbola or Lauren Ibe is the managing director and chief executive officer of Skyland Travel and Tours Limited. Our vision is not far-fetched. We, you know, to promote tourism in the interland. You see, Skyland is basically about developing what we have, you understand, and uh, making the maximum use of her opportunities, you know, because there's a lot of opportunities that is not being adequately explored, you understand, and it is our vision to, to bring our people's understanding and uh, uh, you know, to that reality that is not really, really being exploited the way it ought to be exploited, you understand? And our mission is to give anybody that comes to Skyland Travels the, the best of what they've come to, to get 
and at the same time by by virtue of this qualitative service that they get from us they will be able to refer us to so many other several people to come and to have the same kind of you know quality experience we have a lot of package that we are selling right now we are selling the coming uh, festival which is happening in Adoe Kitsi. We are selling that right now. It's an avenue for everybody to come, to come and know about our culture, to come and know about the people, the beauty of our people, to come and know about our history. You understand? The, the riches in our culture, in our tradition. It's an avenue, that one is coming up. And we also have a tour that we are planning, that we are packaging to South Africa. So it's an avenue for every one of you all. We also have the tour that we are packaging to the, the coming Egypt uh, 2019, which is the Nations Cup. We are, you know, we are in agreement with them. We are packaging, it is a 10, 11 days, 10 nights, and that the visa processing and everything, the tickets, we are packaging that as well. We already have hotels reserved at, uh, you know, it's called Arakan Hotel at the Pyramid View in, in Egypt. The importance of the oil and gas drilling subsector of the Nigerian petroleum industry cannot be understated. Expectedly, the International Association of Drilling Contractors, Nigeria, also known as IADC, was established to interface with government with a view to creating a friendly, conducive and enabling business environment for operators of drilling business in Nigeria. Worrisome, however, is that in spite of the importance of drilling contractors in Nigeria, industry operators are still faced with challenges. Ote Onaibe is President, International Association of Drilling Contractors, Nigeria. Wow, what shaped our business for 2018, last year? Well, I think the industry is beginning to peak. Uh, we were also affected due to lack of activity in the previous years. Having three assets in country and only having one and a half work, one of them did not work at all. Uh, not because it was not capable of working, but because there was just no work. So what has shaped us in 2018 is our readiness to tap and harness the expected growth in 2019. So also are the members of the Association of IADC uh, getting your equipment ready. And I tell you, we have just refurbished and upgraded our facilities, our rigs to, to tap into the uptick of activities that will be taking place in 2019, 2020, and in the near future in the oil industry. We are OAS Energy Services Limited, Nigeria's largest indigenous swap rig services provider. We provide technical and operational expertise across drilling rigs business and have successfully executed several oil field contracts in Nigeria with excellent results. Over the years, we have delivered to the utmost satisfaction of our clients with our highly trained personnel in Nigeria and other partners across Africa, Europe, Canada, and the United States of America. This is OES Energy Services Limited. Dele Badejo is the Chief Executive Officer, OES Energy Services Limited. What excites me is being able to sit down with our customer, we listen to what they want to do, and then as partners with them, we come together to uh, work on a suitable solution to their individual needs. So that is what I like doing. We see every customer as a partner and we know that they are different. They have different uh, needs. So we are a solutions provider. What I like today is that our customers call us in at the beginning of their project, not when they are halfway. They call us in, they tell us what they want to do, and we sit down together and we see how we can provide safe, quality, efficient uh, services to them. It all started with a dream to be the leading offshore drilling company in Nigeria. Ocean Deep Drilling ESV Nigeria Limited 
also known as ODENL, is a joint venture partnership company formed by OES Energy Services Limited and ENSCO PLC to deploy and operate offshore drilling assets in Nigeria. We are driven by our core values of operational excellence, dedication to safety, ethical behavior and teamwork, no harm to people, property or the environment, and leading driller of choice. Ocean Deep Drilling ESV Nigeria Limited, driller of choice. Chijoke Akukuma is the managing director of Ocean Deep Drilling ESV Nigeria Limited. Well, I would, I would like to see uh, IEDC uh, more actively uh, involved with the uh, government uh, in terms of um, setting, uh, reviewing and setting regulations that affect, affect our industry. Um, sometimes when you take a look at uh, some of the regulations, uh, that are in our industry, you can see that the, the intent uh, is good, but the, the execution, uh, if you were to execute them exactly the way they're written, uh, is actually detrimental in some cases to the businesses that those regulations are supposed to support. Um, so I, sometimes I then come to the conclusion that some of these things are written by people who don't necessarily have an intimate working knowledge of the industry. And I think where IEDC can add value is to, to get involved in that, in that process where uh, knowledgeable people can help make sure that we have fit for purpose, uh, rules, regulations, and guidelines that will actually promote the industry, promote the businesses in the industry uh, rather than uh, stifling them, which sometimes is, is what we see um, happen. Um, another area where I think IDC needs to get involved is that there is an increase in uh, what I've spoken of uh, in relation to portfolio businessmen. Now, I, I believe that the, the idea of local content is we're developing Nigerian capacity, uh, building human capacity, making Nigerians technically sound, uh, building organizations that were transferring technology from foreign organizations to the Nigerian organizations, building sustainable businesses that will be here after some of us have left the scene, but the businesses are behind and they are doing well. Uh, today, with the regulatory framework and with the briefcase carriers around, I have my serious doubts and concerns that it is possible for a Nigerian business to thrive in this current environment and to do business in a way that is sustainable 5, 10, 15, 20 years down, down the line. I think we need to increasingly have a longer term outlook in the way we, we do things. And this idea for a lack of a better word, uh, a lot of rent seekers coming into the business to make short-term gain and not really contributing anything to the development of indigenous capacity is disastrous for our industry. One of the key things, and it's related to the challenges that we talked about earlier, as access to funding. Um, in some cases, it's because the banks simply don't have an understanding of the nature of our business. In some cases, it's that the banks uh, have easier ways of making money, so why invest in a business that um, I'm going to have to bother my head understanding what this business does. But I, I think IDC uh, should also figure out how we can play a role uh, in and together with NCDMB and other regulatory agencies in helping the banks understand that they also have a role in building and helping to build and develop local capacity. Because if you make it uneconomic for me to borrow money to operate, uh, then the chances are my business won't be here much longer and the foreign organization is going to come into the space and then we're back to square one. 
have a voice out there that speaks to the mind of the people. Been able to raise an investment grade bond by securitizing the bus ticket receivables. DPK Homes and Property Limited. Easy access to homes and properties ownership, comfort, security, and wealth. DPK Homes and Property Limited. Top notch and innovative services through the provision of quality and affordable homes, sales and documentation of landed properties, real estate brokerage, legal advice on real estate matters, facilities management, building and construction, and so many more. Come over to DPK Homes and Property Limited. Well, well, and this is what we bring down the curtains on today's package of the EOM Business Network. Thank you very much for spending your value time with us. We hope it was worth your while. But just in case you missed out on any aspect of it, then you can come with us to eomcoms.com and any of our feedback channels, as you can see on the screen. Sincere gratitude to you, our sponsors, for your continued interest and support. Always remember, with you and us, we are charms. Oh, yes, I remain Olorogo. Elkana Mawari. Please, let's do this again. Same time, same channel next week. We'll trust you join us.